Hi everyone, it is Sarah and this week I'm bringing to you information on how to dress in winter in New York City or really anywhere that gets below uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. You know, as a tour guide I've realized that a lot of people that come to New York don't really know how to dress for winter and I think part of that is because a lot of the time you see Instagram photos where people are wearing gowns and they're not wearing that much clothes. That's like an illusion. The other thing I think people don't realize is uh, that you walk a lot more than you do in any other city. So here you're going to be walking, especially if you're a visitor, you're probably gonna be walking like three to four miles a day just sightseeing and you're outside that whole time. So you really need to make sure you're wearing the right clothing, especially mid-November to like the end of February. That's kind of like the range. So if you're coming mid-November to the end of February, then you definitely need to take this into consideration because otherwise you're going to be freezing and it's going to ruin your trip. So today I'm gonna go over how you can dress. Um, it's a simple three-step process and this works for both men and women. Um, so what I'm showing you is like can be used for either gender. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so I'm wearing my first step right here. These are thermals. Like it's like a shirt and um, a pant bottom. And these are super, uh, they retain your heat. So you stay super warm in these and these go underneath your clothing. So this is step number one. After you put on your thermals, you have to get a nice pair of socks. So I recommend some socks like this. Um, these are extra thick. You can see the thickness here. Um, you again need more thermal socks uh, than you would the rest of the year and that's just to make sure your feet are super warm. <laughs> So for your next layer, it's just pretty simple. What you would normally wear. So I normally put on a pair of jeans and a sweater. And the thing about thermals, like you're wearing the thermal, it normally comes up to here. So you're gonna have to find things that can cover uh, the thermals. Um, that's my only like real issue with thermals, but trust me, you will regret it if you don't wear them. So I just wear my normal jeans. So let's put them on. Boom, jeans are on. And what you might notice here is this thermal could be a black shirt. I've actually worn it with a sweater like this. Boom, that's my outfit. I mean, it like actually can work really nicely. So that's the amazing thing about this is you can kind of like dress it up if you want. Um, I generally put a full sweater over it because I like to cover it and I find that it's a little bit warmer, especially if you're gonna be outside for most of the day. So I have two sweaters to show you here. Number one is the turtleneck. So here we have just the turtleneck option. This is my go-to, especially if I'm outside for a long period of time, um, sightseeing, doing tours or filming, like this is perfection. So you just, look, you can't even tell I'm wearing thermals. That's the most amazing part about this. You can't even tell. And that's what's so great about them. So then of course you could do just a normal kind of sweatshirt like this that doesn't have the turtleneck. You really want the sweater to be thicker. Otherwise it's just uh, not gonna be warm. Um, so make sure you do that because you need to layer. Layering is like the key here. This is the main part of it, the coat. And you know what I've realized? I don't think uh, a lot of people that are from uh, warmer climates realize, like there's, there's different levels of coat, you know? Like in New York, you have your October, November type coat, and then you have your like real deal winter coat for like December through the end of February and then you go back to the coat you're using in fall in March in April and so you have like these tiers of coat thickness so I'm going to show you what definitely does not work if you're here mid-November to the end of February do not get this coat we have a typical pea coat all right the material is quite thin on this this type of coat is practically useless. 
in the real winter of New York, you're gonna be freezing wearing this. So please get a heavier coat, ideally like goose feathers or some type of padding inside of it to like keep the heat in. And I'm gonna show you um, my go-to coat right now. This is my go-to winter coat. As you can see, we have a lot of thick goose uh, feather lining here. It's waterproof, which is very nice for uh, winter because sometimes it snows, sometimes it rains. So you really need that. And it has these lovely things so that I can just put my hands right in here and then I can put the gloves over it. Very convenient for keeping the heat in. We got the coat, we got it on. All right, this coat is made for Arctic temperatures. So it's very important that you get a coat that's made for Arctic temperatures. Okay, and you can literally, has a nice little belt. So this is the women's coat has the belt. <laughs> the men's coat doesn't have the belt. Louie actually has the men's version of this coat and sometimes we don't need to wear anything else under it. Like that is how warm this coat is. This one also has a nice hood. Look at that. Oh, so nice. And you can also close it. <laughs> if it's really, really cold, you can do this. <laughs> but hopefully you won't have to experience that because that is brutal. Also, we have pockets. That's really helpful because when you have a coat on, like everything's more like difficult to get to. So just being able to have these external pockets. This is the ideal coat. Um, now this brand of coat is definitely pricier. I think this one was like $800, but there are cheaper options. So I'm gonna put all that in the link below along with everything I'm talking about in this video. So that way it's really easy for you to find proper winter clothes. You have to get a nice hat. If you've watched my videos, then you probably recognize this hat. <laughs> This is my go-to hat at all times. And the difference between this hat and other hats is this actually has fleece on the inside. It's really important to get a hat with fleece on the inside. Boom. Got your hat on and there it is. You're ready to go experience all the best of New York. Of course, if you want gloves, you can get those. Now I'm in the process of moving and I lost my gloves. So I'll link some gloves that I like below. You need a pair of boots that are high up. This is important because sneakers, your ankles will be freezing. You just need something that goes past the ankle to cover that like potential area where skin could show. So I like to get a pair of boots like this. You can get mini boots like this online. For men, you can also get a pair of boots. Most men don't wear knee high boots. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Maybe it happened. Listen, this is New York. You probably, you can definitely see everything here. It's part of the fun of it. Most men during winter will wear something like this. Okay, so these cover your ankle. Um, they're stylish and there you have it. That is how you put together your perfect winter outfit where you're not freezing and wanting to go inside the entire time you're exploring the city. <laughs> so if you need a summary of this, I have a blog post link below too, which brings it like really simple step by step with all the links of everything, but happy exploring New York. And um, if you haven't checked out my other New York videos, that might be a really good resource for you because I, I have like 45 of them last time I checked like on things to do, things to eat, best restaurants, best bars. I mean, you name it, there are videos about it. So enjoy, and thanks for watching. Subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.